Hi everybody, my name's Warren, but you may know me better as Clef on the Moto user forums. So there's been a lot of questions lately about rigging with Moto 601. And today a question came up from a user uh, about how to add a new joint to an existing skeleton without disturbing any weighting that's already in place. So I'm gonna show you how that can be done. Now I've created a cylinder, the ever popular cylinder, the go-to primitive for demonstrating apparently anything to do with deformation or skeletons. So let's go into setup mode and we'll select the skeleton command. And under the tool properties, you see I've got intersection selected and the name's gonna be joint. I'm just gonna go into a front view to make it easier and go ahead and quickly put in some a few joints okay now I'll just drop the tool with spacebar switch to perspective and yep everything's the intersection has worked and everything's down the middle of the cylinder so let's take a quick look at the joint hierarchy that we've got. So I'm going to hold down shift while I click on the little arrow. So it'll unfold the whole hierarchy. And you can see the first joint is just named joint. So I'm going to rename that guy to joint root. And then we've got joint two, three, four, and five is this end joint that's really not going to be involved in the weighting at all. So I'm just going to call that guy joint end. Okay, so now we have a pretty clear hierarchy. Uh, from watching Rich Hurry's master rigging course, it's been drilled into me that you've got to make sure to get your naming right, which is really makes a lot of sense because it's much easier to find things and debug problems when you have proper naming schemes. So uh, definitely if you haven't bought Rich's uh, uh, master rigging course, do yourself a favor and buy it because it's, it's awesome sauce. So let's go ahead and now that we've got our, our joints in place, we'll go ahead and bind it to the cylinder. So I'm going to select the root joint, shift click on the cylinder to select it, go to deformers and choose bind. Now, instead of smooth, I'm going to choose heat. I find whenever possible, uh, heat gives a cleaner default bind uh, than the smooth option. We'll go ahead and apply that. Now to see the result of the bind, we're gonna switch from OpenGL view uh, to vertex map. And as we select each of the joints, you'll see in red the associated weight map. So yeah, it looks pretty good. The heat bind has done its thing. And down here in the list for weight maps, you can see it's generated uh, a weight map for each of those joints, except of course the end joint, which doesn't have any influence in terms of the bind. And you can actually view those maps by selecting them directly. So for example, we can click on root, two, three, four, to see what that particular weight map is. And by the way, a sort of handy tip is if you hold, that, hold the control key and click again, a selected weight map, it'll deselect it. So now we're back to viewing things from, uh, from the perspective of selecting the joint itself. Okay, so up here under cylinder, uh, under the mesh, you'll see there's a little plus sign. And when we open that up, we can see it's created a normalizing folder. And that was created by the bind when it also generated those weight maps. And if we come over here to the deformers tab, we can also see the normalizing folder. And if we open it up, you can see each of those joints with the weight map and the associated mesh. And what the normalizing folder will do is it'll say any of the uh, weight maps that are in here will have to add up to 100% influence over a vertex. So what that means is if we were to uh, increase the weighting on a vertex here, it would have to take away some weighting from another joint that has influence. So it's going to make everything add up to 100%. So if we added, if we kept adding weighting associated with this joint, it would take away weighting from the next joint. 
Okay. Which is the behavior that you're going to want for things like uh, characters. For most, most situations, anyway. Okay. So now, this all looks great, but we have the problem that we want to go ahead and add a new joint to this skeleton. And let's say that we've, you know, we've tuned our weighting, we've come down here into the weighting, and we've done some, uh, some painting and adjusting. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and do that, just to, just to prove a point. So if we wanted to adjust our weighting here, I can go to Paint, and hold down right click, of course, size your brush, and just paint a little bit more weight along the top. Okay, so just associate a little bit more, more weight at the top, and we'll take away by holding down Control a little bit of the weight off the off the bottom. And if we hold down Shift, we can we can smooth. Okay, so we've done kind of a kind of a weird weighting here custom weighting on this this first joint. Let's uh, take a quick peek at how that deforms. So I'll exit setup mode. We'll grab this joint. And you can see it's weighting because of our painting. It's no longer symmetrical. And I'll just rotate it and you'll see we get a little kind of a bulgy, bulgy effect there uh, because of the way that we've because of the way that we've weighted that. Okay, let's go back into setup. And now we say, okay, we've got our character, we've adjusted, we've painted and adjusted our weights to get the shoulder and whatever to bend the way we want. But now we want to go ahead and add a new joint to the skeleton. So I'm going to select the, the root joint, go back to the skeleton command, and instead of add, this time I'm going to choose insert. And down here, I'm going to click on this joint, and what it's going to do is it's going to add an additional joint in between. So I'm going to click it, and there you go. Split it into two joints. So I'm going to hit spacebar to drop the skeleton tool, and let's take a look at where we stand. So we got our root joint, we got joint two, joint three, and now things get strange. Now we've got uh, this joint, which used to be joint four, and now it's just renamed it to joint, which was an effect of the insert that we did on the skeleton. So I'm just going to right click that and rename this back to joint four. And here's our new joint called locator. And that's not probably the most descriptive name, so I'm going to change that to joint new. So it's explicit. So there we go. We've got our existing hierarchy, and we've got this joint new. But joint new, as you can see, has no weighting associated with it. And our previous joint, joint four, still has its old weighting, where it, where it was occupying this whole space when we did the bind, right? So we now we've got to fix that. So we've got to create a weight map for this joint new. And you can see here in the weight map list, there is no weight map associated with joint new because it didn't exist when we did the original bind. So let's select that guy, go to weighting, oops, sorry, not weighting, deformers, shift, click on the cylinder to select it, and now we can do another bind. Bind, heat is good, okay. Aha, and now we can see we've got weighting for this joint new, but it encompasses the entire cylinder. Furthermore, if we look up here under cylinder, you can see we have two normalizing folders. If we go to deformer, as we see, oh, we've got two normalizing folders now. And the second normalizing folder includes our joint new that we just bound. So that's something that we're going to deal with when we continue in part two.